how I started yeah. surfing. I uh, started when I was 20. I decided to just move out of the apartment. I quit my job and I got a job in Portugal. So I moved there and worked on a surf camp there and surfed two, three times a day and living the life. <laughs> I was out with my friends and a coach and I got my first green wave and the feeling was totally different. And then I was like, okay, this is how it's supposed to be. Now uh, my life is totally <laughs> uh, changed. If you look back a couple of years and compare it to now, I've uh, bought an apartment and having a baby on the way and, uh, and a dog. So uh, now I'm trying to, to juggle this typical uh, everyday life and also uh, the surfing. And that's the nice thing about when I realized that you can surf in Norway. And that was uh, the turning point for me to take the decision to stay and live in Norway and not keep on traveling. We uh, wake up usually early and uh, trying to pack all the, the gear and uh, it's super important that you get everything with you because if you forget a glove or a shoe, then you just can't jump into the water. The reason for using a boat when you're surfing would be that it's a wave. You, you can't get there with the car or hiking. That is every surfer's dream to have a wave by themselves. I started the first girls' surf camp in Norway six years ago. And uh, I wanted to make a community where they could find each other and connect. And also, if you were already surfing, maybe learn more. Or if you wanted to get into the community, also this was supposed to be like a, a door into the surfing community. So it's super rewarding to see people maybe changing their lives. I get a little bit of the same feeling when I see other people learning how to surf or uh, catching their first wave or they manage to do something they've been working on and they're surfing for a while. It gives me a little bit the same feeling that I get if I'm surfing myself actually. <laughs> yeah.